Good morning, Grand Rising, and welcome to another Monday morning message on beautiful leadership. I'm Toby Tompkins, founder and CEO of Safio Inc. Thank you for joining me. Apologize for this. Getting out a little late this weekend, but it was Easter weekend and I was out having a good time. So um, I've been thinking about how organizations and teams are like a forest. And any of you know, uh, beautiful leadership is not rooted in some of the typical frameworks of leadership development, um, it, like social justice or, 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 you know, military sort of command and control, control structures. Beautiful leadership is actually rooted in biomimicry, the study of nature, and it really focuses on how we can learn from the 3.9 billion years of wisdom that is already at our fingertips in nature. And so I like to look at systems of nature um, to begin to understand what we can learn and extract from that wisdom, that proven practical knowledge um, in terms of how we think about the organizations that we're building and sustaining today and into the future. So for that, the notion of a forest um, is something that, that really, um, I love forests. And, and it occurred to me that there, there's a lot going on in a forest. And if you begin to think of a team as a forest um, or as an organizational culture as a forest, you begin to realize that if you begin to build your organization like a forest, you actually are creating an ecosystem where all of the members of the forest, those who were born and raised and lived their entire lives in the forest, and even those who enter or pass through the forest, are able to support the purpose of the forest. So there's a lot going on in the forest. And one of the things that I wanna talk about today, and I'm gonna go back to the metaphor of a forest and, and share with you a little bit that I know about forests, but forests are a combination of huge gigantic trees, which often produce the shade and define the forest and little saplings, seeds struggling to break through the soil and eventually become one of those big trees and you know as a kid i used to always ask myself how does a little tree in the how does a little seed in the forest become a big tree when it needs space it needs sunlight it needs access to soil how does that happen well it doesn't wage war against the other trees it's actually the other trees who help that little sapling to become clear and in that way one of the things that happens in the forest is that trees thrive on the biodiversity of the forest. So if you were to look at a forest of pine trees, um, that pine tree forest might look very much like one forest comprised of many of the same thing. But in reality, it's a wonderfully balanced sort of mixture of plants and fungi and animals and insects and trees that creates a perfect environment for them all to coexist. And inside of that relationship are a lot of sort of mutualistic relationships. And I wanna talk a lot about mutualism because mutualism is different from equity and it's different from equality. It's the way in which I develop tools and resources to be in relationship with someone who otherwise might be my adversary, okay? Um, so today I want to talk about the concept of the mother tree. In many forests that, let's say, are comprised of many different species of trees, um, what happens is that a number of trees establish the role of being the mother tree. And those trees are responsible for ensuring the growth and the protection of trees of their own species. And so they grow strong, they share their energy, they share their intelligence, they even share their resources with other trees of the same genus and species so that those trees can continue on in the legacy of that mother tree and maintain the balance of the forest. And as leaders, um, this speaks to why diversity and inclusion are so important at all levels of the organization, because we know that diversity and inclusion when it's operating most effectively produces stronger outcomes, higher performance and greater impact, not only within the organization, but also in terms of the impact on the marketplace that you serve. So the question that I have for leaders today is, 
what kind of a mother tree are you? What do you serve? What do you protect that ensures that who you are, and not only in terms of your identity, but in terms of your core values and your way of leading will be provided for long after you leave your post or the company or the title. Um, as a matter of fact, think about your whole career and think about the mother tree that you have been or that you are interested in becoming everywhere you step into a leadership role. For me, I'm a mother tree for access. I believe it is important to provide opportunities for people to realize their greatest potential through the workplace. So I often spend my time with younger people saying, why are you here? I know you need to get a paycheck, but you're not here just to do that. So what is it that you are striving to become through this opportunity? And then my job as the mother tree is to bring the resources and support forward for them to be able to realize that while they're in my organization and under my shade. So who's under your shade as a leader? What opportunities are you creating, not just for people who look like you, but people who share your ambition, people who share perhaps your background or your educational training, or even people who share your own values. So that's what I want you to think about today. All right, have a great week. We'll be back on Thursday with Ask Toby. Feel free to send your questions to asktoby at gmail.com and um, get your shot, by the way. All righty, take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye.